Eric. Go, go. go. Are you yeah. rolling? Yes. Are I'm you rolling? rolling? Okay, good. I mean, I honestly like we're coming on today, and we're already giving each other a hard time before we even get on. And I'm like, just, just freaking go, man. Just roll. What is up, everybody? How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. Glad to be here. I love our daily internet classes with you. Like, it's a fun thing that we do every day. Well, look. I've said it a million times, the world is going through an adjustment right now. We're all learning how to use different technologies to do our jobs. And for me, I went from having this studio with you two guys sitting around and you guys dealing with the cameras and you guys dealing with the lighting and everything else. And now I've, I've had to adjust where I'm working off what I, what this camera is, is a desktop computer, by the way, that we took from 1090. I haven't had anybody look at it. I don't know if it's running efficiently. I'm just using what I've got. These are the only tools that I've got. I'm using them. And so I don't realize that when I've got a whole bunch of windows open and I've got the internet refreshing pages, I don't realize how much power that takes because I'm plugged in hardline. So I assume that I'm like working at hundred percent maximum at all times. Yeah, I mean that's the in theory that's the way it's supposed to work, but your computer still requires like its engine to to work faster than normal because we don't use Zoom, we use like a, something that has production, which is why you see graphics around us right now. So like it takes a little bit more extra than just a normal Zoom FaceTime thing. Mm. Just looking after you, man. Trying to get hey. your, trying to get that crystal clear complexion going on. My dog, I appreciate it because as we sit here right now, you look crystal clear to me. Browner looks very, very pixelated, like as if I'm doing an interview with somebody who who they don't want to show their face, but yet you say what I see is not necessarily what you see what? or what we ultimately see. We're a minute and fifty two seconds into this video. Just look at, and I'm putting Browner on screen while you say how pixelated he looks, so yeah. you can see the way yeah. it looks for me. It's a weird yeah. thing. AKA the yeah. pixel god. <laughs> the what? The pixel god. Dr. Pixel Mike God. Shout out. Dr. John Browner, MD TV, or whatever That's your handle right. is That's in right, the YouTube baby. chat. That's right. Shout out. <laughs> By the way, when my name appears on this show underneath, underneath my face, Alex, I would appreciate it if Dr. John Browner showed up. I really appreciate that. What do you mean? I don't have a- uh, TV, MD. Have, Oh, like you don't want at John Browner anymore? No, no. Well, change your change your Twitter handle again. Dr. Yeah, for the for the thousandth time. Oh, yeah. Listen, at this point, if you follow me, you follow me. I didn't. I get into <laughs> super expedition out of doses. It, it, it is what it is. Yeah, come on now, come on, snatch. You got you got to do better on your alidosises. Yeah, that was bad. I don't. Yeah. I yeah, my bad. Yeah. All right. Listen, let me say this. I'm glad everybody's here. Much love to all the great friends that are just starting to come in now to the YouTube chat over here. And hey, I loved it yesterday in the Facebook chat because here was Neil Umsheld. I hope I say Neil's last name right. I probably don't. But here's Neil, who's been a great friend forever, who's a really prominent attorney in New York. Neil, should I not say that? And here's Neil in the YouTube chat. And Neil tells me in the YouTube chat that Ruthie from Tory Holistics is over in the Facebook chat. <laughs> and next thing I know, Neil and I are on top of Ruthie in the U whoa, in the whoa, in the whoa, oh, whoa, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean whoa. we're gotta, like, talking no, to her in the Facebook chat. I you know what I meant. In the Facebook chat, <laughs> Neil and I are both talking to Ruthie. Like we both wanted Ruthie's attention. So I'll start off by saying thank you to Tori Holistics, not just for the great sponsorship of the show not just for the 20% discount when you use our promo code, which is now grande, G-R-A-N-D-E, -E, you can save 20%. Ruthie, I love the fact that you and Tori Holistics are involved. I even said to Ruthie the other day, Tori Holistics should have their own sided handle so that they can ask people, do you prefer flour or vape? Do you prefer the, the beer to the wine? I mean, poll your audience, get to know what they're thinking. And Ruthie has really jumped in on what we're doing here. So thank you, Ruthie. Thank you, Tori Holistics. You'll hear more about them. Promo code later. Grande. That's right. I got all this really cool swag to give away and we were talking about it yesterday. How should we give it away? I think what we should do is uh, for our next Great Friends Happy Hour, everybody who comes into the happy hour can get one of those hats or t-shirts or something. What is, does that sound good? Sounds yeah, like a I good idea to me. I, I nominate JB to handle that. Yes, I do too. <laughs> yes, JB will Giving handle JB that. work. JB will handle it because JB is not afraid to go out of his house. JB has been to my house as we are now into quarantine day 64. So now I got to come back and pick up these shirts. Yeah. 65? Okay. 65. Day 65. 
Yeah, day 65, episode 202 of the podcast. Which is that is, right? Yes. And, and, and you guys know I have a, a roommate that works for a brewery here in town. Mm-hmm. And according to him, as of noon, they are open to the public. Sweet. Wow. And I'm like, okay, how's that happening? But cool, I guess. And now my next question is, when is Scott Kaplan going to have the show back in studio? When is he going to demand that we go back in studio? Well, I'll ask you guys, do you want to come back into studio or do you guys like the way we're doing it? I know, Alex, you'll never leave your house again. <laughs> <laughs> um, but do you guys, are you excited to get back to getting out of your house and having a bit of a routine and battling with traffic and, or do you like it the way it is? Go ahead, JB. I am open to whatever. I was initially against the way we're currently doing it now because I think the show has a different vibe when everyone's together. But for the safety of all parties involved, this is the conclusion that we all agree to. So we've got a groove with this now. So I feel like our versatility, is this has caused us to be more versatile in different areas. So I think we can do either. For internet reasons, we should probably all be together. But for safety reasons, until there's a vaccine or until the governor kind of gives the thumbs up, I mean, it's up to y'all. What do you mean um, until the governor gives a thumbs up? I thought you said you listen to scientists, not politicians. If you tell me that the governor gives the thumbs up, you're in, you're good? Because he got it from the scientists. Oh, all right. Or the donors. I didn't say the president. I, I will say this. Yeah. I will say this. I don't want to be a pioneer. Mm. I, like When the majority <laughs> of like radio stations are back in their studio, I'm not going to fight it. Like, fine, let's do it. Let's be part of the second wave, baby. So are you saying... That you'll come back? No, not tomorrow. Not this week. <laughs> no, not at all. Well, interestingly, hey, you know, Bill Hagen, who is the guy who is now the new quote unquote owner of 1090. I say it like that because it's just a little more complicated. But Bill. The leaser? The, he, he leases. Shout yes. out to Bill in the YouTube section. Right on. Bill was in Arizona this weekend because he, he's kind of a Arizona, San Diego back and forth kind of guy. Bill was in Arizona. He's like, dude, Arizona doesn't even know coronavirus existed ever. Mm -hmm. Like Arizona is wide open, wild, wild west. Come into any restaurant you want to. Chili's has got a freaking line out the door at five (laughs) o'clock for the early bird special for all the retirees in Scottsdale. Let me show you guys this. Yeah, go ahead. You can see my screen here. I can't. How about? Yeah. This is my cousin getting a tattoo yesterday in Phoenix. That's oh, how open man. they are. It's going to be a no for me. That's how open they are. Yeah, that's going to be a no for me, dog. I also uh, be a no for me. I also shamed him, but yeah. Yeah, for me. Look, um this is things are I feel like and I've been saying it for a while because I've known for you know you can feel the vibration over the last couple of weeks. People are getting antsy and they want to get out and then all of a sudden you just get a little inch and then you take a mile and before you know it people are like screw this, I'm going back to work. And so um, even I talked to Hagen today. He's like, yeah, I'm in my office in Carlsbad. Yeah, it just it's just a little like I don't want a second wave to happen. But you do, you read what's happening in China and they're going through a second wave right now. It's not as bad as the first one. Um, so I'm hoping that that Arizona, Phoenix, that Georgia, Atlanta, that Texas, the places that are already open, open like that. I'm hoping there is no second wave and then that we can all go back to normal. But I am very cool waiting on them to be our guinea pigs to see if it happens or not. I am too. But I, the, I have no problem with Georgia and, and any of those other states being our guinea pigs. I'm the temperature absolutely helps in Arizona. Like Chicago's damn near underwater now because of the weather, and it's still bad there. There's now saying Georgia and Florida are cooking the books when it comes to these results of who's got it, who's been tested, who's like died China? from it. Like China. So who knows, dude? Who knows? All right. Well, I want to say – um, as we're just kicking off here, and today is Wednesday, right? Allegedly. I think so. Yeah, today's Wednesday. I'm so, so I legit am starting to lose track of days. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what day of the week it is. But I, I was saying great to have the Tory Holistics people involved. I want to say shout out to Corky and Corky's Pest Control. Again, I encourage you to take any money you can take at this moment in time. So if Corky's has this great friends connection thing happening and he's going to pay you $35, do it. Here's how it works. I'm a Corky's customer. I say, hey, Alex needs to become a Corky's customer. Alex becomes a Corky's customer, and I am the referral guy. I get $35. Refer a great friend when you are a Corky's Pest Control customer, 1-800-901-1102. And I got to send some love to Gary Cooper. 
858-376-1299. Look, you want to save money right now? Again, something's happened in your life. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe there's some hardship happening. You want to keep your house. You want to lower your payments. You want to save money. You want to refinance. If this sounds good to you, you should be calling Gary Cooper. 858-376-1299. Call Koopa Loop and work that thing out, man. Okay. So loop. Yeah. So some shout outs early on and we'll get to some more uh, as the show goes on. Okay. I, I got to say to start off today, I've got a few things on my mind. I, we didn't book a guest today because yesterday's guest, Dylan Barber, we, we spent an hour with this guy and I will just say this about Dylan. I'll talk more about it later, but, um, I realize at times that you think that, Hey, listen, if it's not somebody talking sports, I'm not really interested, or I didn't watch the bachelor. If you hung with us yesterday, you found out that that conversation turned into a lot about sports. He was a football player. He played at a small school. He used his athlete mentality, blah, 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 through the bachelor. I mean, it, it turned into a sportsy kind of conversation. But goodness, man, do I have to sell you on this? Really? Like I told Neil in the, in the YouTube chat, hey, if you don't like this, if you think this sucks, I'll give you your money back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good policy. Yeah. That's yeah. a 100% good policy. I stand by that. Yeah. I did yeah. see that. I did see when I when I tuned into the to the show a little bit when he first came on. Like, I can't stand this. I'm out. I'm out. And I'm like, I mean, okay. We know whatever. Bye, I guess. I mean, like the, that's the brown word, right? Bye. Bye. But I mean, Bye. If, like, give it if you don't want to give it a chance, don't give it a chance. Did we go too long with him? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know what? That. It's it, it's fun though. You know, like when you talk to somebody new and different, it's fun. Look, I, I, I want to talk about this really quick. Let me off the top of my head in no particular order. But when you talk to fun and interesting people and from different walks of life who have different audiences, most of the great friends don't know who Dylan is. Okay. Their wives do, their girlfriends do, their daughters do, but most of the dudes don't. And even if they do, they're like, I don't. Right. <laughs> Freaking gay, man. Right. Freaking gay, dude. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know who this guy is. He even came on as a cool guy right from the beginning. It was like, dude, I'm so happy to be here hanging with you guys, talk some sports, hang out. Cause everybody thinks I'm just some soft, you know, uh, pretty boy. Cause I was on this bachelor show and we're like, yeah, that's kind of what people think. Pretty so, much. so it was fun. And you know, I like talking to people from different walks of life. This, how do you think Joe Rogan? And this is where I want to, I'll start with this right now. How do you think Joe Rogan has just signed a $100 million deal, according to the reports? How do you think Rogan has signed a $100 million deal to take his podcast to Spotify? Now, look, I've used Rogan's name on, on our podcast many times. I think that when you look at who are the top players in any game, you say, I want to follow like that. If I were an NBA player during the 90s, I'd have wanted to try and be like Michael Jordan. Right? I mean, isn't that what everybody was trying to be? Pretty much. Kobe wanted to be Michael Jordan. LeBron wanted to be Michael Jordan. So if I were an NBA player, I'd want to be Michael Jordan. If I'm going to be in the podcast world, who's the biggest and the best? That's Rogan. We're on episode 202. You could look this up right now, Alex. How many episodes has Rogan done in the probably 15 years of podcasting? Because he was a pioneer. He was in it before anybody was in it. Um, the latest one was number 1,476. Okay. So think about that. He's, he's 1200 episodes. <laughs> it's taken us a year to do 200 episodes. He's 1200 episodes ahead of us. He's hundred total. Yeah. He, he's six years ahead of us. You understand what I'm saying? He He's six years ahead of the game is what I'm saying to you. And on top of that being, uh, in the face of every mixed martial arts fan for the last 15 years and also being a very successful comedian on top of that. So his audience is just, it's varied. It's so varied. He has a vast audience and he's found a way to somehow bring all of them under the same tent by having people on his show who half the audience goes, I can't believe you did that. And the other half's like, man, I think it's good that you had that guy on. And so he doesn't, I'm not a, I'm not a quote unquote fan of the way he does it. But I respect the fact that he's been able to garner such a large following by being so open to having anyone on his show. See, this is gets me back to this guy, Dylan, from yesterday. So I don't care if you're somebody who could talk to me about the, the future vaccine of coronavirus, the realities of the medical pandemic, 
um, who's impacted, who's less likely. I mean, we could have a full conversation with a doctor or a scientist or a, a what do they call somebody who's a virusologist? I, I made that up. Wow. But that sounded like sounded really great. real. It sounded yeah, good. Really it good. sounded yeah. like if they have that. Write that down. Virusology, if they got that. Virusology, then, uh, I'm with then, you. Then we, let's book one of those guys. But my point is, is that I like talking to everybody about all kinds of stuff. And here's what Neil said yesterday, which I really, really appreciated. Because when I said to Neil, if you don't like this interview with this guy, Dylan, I'll give you your money back. He said to me, he goes, no, I trust you. If it wasn't for trusting you, I would never have heard about interviews like Marcus Luttrell. Now, you got to understand what that means. That means that Neil has been listening to the radio show since 2009, 10, 11, because Marcus Luttrell, you, you've seen the movie, The Lone Survivor. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I had that book, Lone Survivor, and I read that book, that book changed my life. Anybody who's ever read Lone Survivor, forget the movie. Don't get me wrong. Movie was great. Movie was amazing. But I remember talking to Pete Berg, the, the director of the movie, saying, dude, if we wanted to put in the whole book, it was going to take millions and millions and millions of dollars more because it was that much longer of a movie. The book, Lone Survivor, will change your life if you haven't read it. And if you have, you know what I'm talking about. So what Neil said to me was, if we don't trust you to talk about or talk with this guy, Dylan, we, why would we have trusted you to talk to a Navy SEAL before the movie was ever out, before none of us had ever read the book? So, Neil, I appreciate that. And appreciate for those of you, that. Yeah. For, my for, own shout out. For those of you that decided, hey, I'm going to bail because I think this is pretty lame that you're talking to some pretty boy who's on The Bachelor, um, think about also our business. I mean, let's all think about it. Fuck, man, I'll put this out there in the open for anybody. I don't care. Think about our business. You got this young guy who's got a following and none of the people who follow him know who the hell we are, right? Mm -hmm. so, so if this kid goes out and he retweets our tweets, if he promotes some of the stuff we're doing on Instagram, if he jumps into a sided debate, dude, we're going after an influencer's audience. No shame in that game. Hear that, Browner? That's like snatch. Ain't no shame in his game. Uh. It, no. Until you dropped the uh, I was going to let it slide. The uh kind of really? killed it. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't the uh make it? Nah. Nah. The uh, uh, the uh made it Kaplan, not snatch. Well, that's true. The uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the uh true. is like Kaplan's like signature. You know? Uh, 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 uh. That's his thing. That yeah. many uhs? Do you remember the intro when we used to play the full thing? Oh, oh, good. don't don't remind me. Uh, uh, Let's see right. what you did. Let me go back to Rogan for a moment, though, because I, I want to get. I know Alex, you like Rogan. I like Rogan. You're so right about Joe. Joe Rogan was a was an up and coming TV star at one time. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, because he was really a comedian before that, his comedy career began to progress. Then the UFC stuff started to happen and the podcast and Joe, excuse me if I'm getting the chronology wrong in any way, but fear factor, man, you got to throw fear factor. That's how I found out about him. Totally fear factor. And was it news radio? Was that the yeah. Kelsey grammar show? So fear factor news, radio, stand up comedy, podcasting, mixed martial arts. I mean, boom, it career blows up. And then you, people know you as you're funny, you are uh, kind of, you know, you're, you're, you've got a potty mouth, which good by me, you know, you, you'll talk about smoking weed, you're smart, you got a lot of things on your mind. And now you've got this podcast in LA. And one by one, as the as the views are going up, you, it becomes more valuable to all different kinds of people. That's why you have the CEO, Jack Dorsey of Twitter on his podcast, because when he wants to really, really communicate, he can tweet. But he understands that Rogan's got this massive audience. So for Rogan to sign a contract with Spotify, to say no more YouTube, no oh, more Apple. Right, say again? That's not right. The uh, YouTube, the full version, like this version of, of his show, mm -hmm. will not be on YouTube anymore. Mm -hmm. But his clips page is going to be on YouTube still. Smart. Which I thought Spotify kind of got screwed a little bit on that part. Very smart. By the way, speaking of clips, again, Here's Rogan as an influence. We now have the Scott and BR clips page. You can get five minutes of Kevin Harlan, five minutes of Jim Nance, five minutes of Tony Baselli, five minutes of Dylan Barber, if that's your thing. Um, <laughs> but you got to come subscribe to our clips page. We're just getting started with this. And these are the smaller digestible 
parts so you don't have to listen to 30 or 40 minutes. So with Rogan, here's the point. Rogan is taking his content and it's home base now. It really is, is just Spotify. Spotify brilliantly is doing what Sirius Satellite Radio did if you're just trying to read through all this. When Sirius Satellite Radio had nothing, they went and they took Howard Stern from radio and they put him on Sirius. They paid him a fortune. And Howard has since proven that you don't have to be on live all the time. In fact, Howard's really only on live a few hours a week. Everything you hear on his Sirius channel is recorded stuff. It could be 10 years old. You're still listening to it. For Rogan, his first episode of his podcast, 1,400 episodes ago or 1,600 episodes ago, it's still out there. It's still available. People still go listen to it and watch it. So what Spotify did is they made an investment in the Rogan brand, obviously, and they're saying, we're going to use Rogan the way Sirius used Stern, and we're going to bring all of his people from YouTube, from Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else you get Rogan, we're going to bring all those people to Spotify. Just the same way they had spent a whole bunch of money just recently buying The Ringer, which is another whole brand of podcasts mm -hmm. and, and, and content and so on. So Spotify, and I admire the hell out of them for this, they have decided to invest big money in content creators. And if you're Rogan, who estimates makes about $30,000 per episode of his podcast right now, you've just done what Stern did. You took the big money deal. And you know what? If your audience numbers dwindle, which is how industry experts predict it will go down because Apple Podcasts is 60% of his audio and YouTube is, I don't remember how much of a percentage of his audience. The ex experts say, He's no longer a podcaster anymore because he's now working for one company, one brand. It's not available in all different podcast platforms. So he loses his podcast status. Big deal. I got a hundred million in the bank. I give a shit. Um, but they predict, they, experts, I've read this all morning long, that his numbers will go down from a hundred million to 40 million, whatever it is. What does Rogan give a shit? He just got paid a hundred million. And if you want his content, you'll come you'll come get it on Spotify. His if numbers were, may have gone down, but Spotify's numbers are going to go up. Of course. And that is what's most important. And that, in addition to purchasing the ringer and getting Joe Rogan on board, I think that is what people lose sight of. They don't see the big picture of it. Yes. Spotify gave Joe Rogan a hundred million, but what's a hundred million to Spotify when what they're going to make off Joe Rogan and what they're going to make off the ringer. People see business in such short, short sighted ways. It's almost embarrassing. Well, I wanted to start there today because I find it fascinating that that this amount of money. Look, I, I thought when Tony Romo got paid $17 million a year by CBS, like, holy shit, that's a lot of money. Uh, when you see Joe Rogan and the 14 or 1600 episodes that that man has built of his podcast, take that property and move it someplace exclusive and and say, follow me. Guess what? The audience is going to follow him. It may go from 100 million to 60 million. It may go down to 40 million. I don't know. I'm just telling you, there's going to be a lot of people that will follow him and it will make Spotify a ton of money. So here's, congratulations, here's, uh, Joe Rogan and Spotify. Here's the, uh, the math question. So he's got a $100 million deal, right? Am I doing the math right to average out how much he made per episode? If you divide that by the 1,400, does that mean he makes $71,000 per episode so far? Go go do that one more time. You, you're hundred million dollars. Uh huh. And he's done fourteen hundred episodes. I would just divide a hundred million by fourteen hundred, right? Mm hmm. So it's seventy one thousand dollars an episode, basically. That's amazing. But but think about it. You're buying a catalog of work. Just just to be right. clear, that's you know, huge. This is like buying if 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 you could buy all of Michael Jackson's recordings. There's a value for that. I don't know what the number is. It could be a billion dollars for all I know. But if you could take all of the Beatles recordings, whoever owns the rights to all of that, let's just Michael call Jackson. it Paul McCartney, in this case, Michael Jackson, <laughs> and you wanted to buy, you wanted to buy the Beatles collection from Michael Jackson for $500 million. I mean, that's what Spotify has done here. They've bought themselves, however, call it, how many years has Rogan been podcasting? And 2006. Okay. So you've bought 14 years and 1600 episodes of this podcast that you've bought a body of work. 
Yeah, and that's going to be the exclusive thing once uh, at some point at the end of this year, everything is leaving Apple and every other platform and going to Spotify. So if you wanted to listen to Elon Musk, the first one, you have to go to Spotify. You know, it's not going to be on Apple anymore. That's a really, really big deal. That's the point of all of this. Again, you've bought the catalog. You've not just bought. And by the way, you've bought the future, but you've bought the entire catalog. Okay. And they didn't buy creative control, which for Joe Rogan is the biggest thing. It's everything. Because why, why would, would you want to buy creative control anyways? Why would right. you care about owning the name Joe Rogan as long as you have the property of Joe Rogan? Dude, the guy can say whatever he wants, okay? Um, he could say the N-word and Spotify is not going to fire him because yeah. that's why they hired him. That's what they're paying for. That's the appeal. Here. And we're sitting here talking about radio and going back to radio and it's great for us, another platform. But there's no person on this earth that works for radio that will ever get a $100 million deal. No, that is, a, that is a podcast thing. That is a podcast, video, audio podcast thing. That's it kind of when you think about it, there's not a single radio host in this world. Ryan Seacrest is probably the biggest radio name out there besides Howard Stern. He will never touch a hundred million dollar radio deal ever. I would. You know what? You know what? I disagree with that in this sense, because if I heart wanted to do that iheart has multiple platforms to ensure that they can get that hundred million out of him so ryan seacrest is so versatile he can do a bunch of stuff for iheart they've got awards they got concerts there's a way they can recoup the value of ryan seacrest right but it's, not, million dollar but it's deal. not just for his show like if you want to make him host stuff and right. host award shows and host Joe Rogan's not doing that. He's doing a show. I no. would be interested to see what happens with the relationship of Joe Rogan and Spotify outside of the podcast going forward. I just think that, again, you, you can look at Rush Limbaugh who's making 25 or $30 million a year. You could probably look at a Dan Patrick that's making a few million dollars a year doing radio, but there's a TV component. Rome, who's making a few million. There are probably other political. Hannity's probably making 20 plus million dollars a year doing radio. There are guys making big money in radio. But your point is well made. This is a hundred million dollar deal for fourteen years of a catalog of podcasts and the future of these podcasts. So, congratulations, Rogan. Congratulations, Spotify. Um, and congratulations Young to Jamie, the podcasting world. Producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But congratulations to all you guys because um, trailblazing. And I got to give you guys nothing but credit. So there you go. All right. Um, again, today on a Wednesday afternoon. We're in episode 202. We're in lockdown quarantine day 65. I want to keep rolling here today because um, there are some interesting stories that I'd like to talk to. Hometown. Look, I got it. We can show you the stats. Alex could bring them up. It's kind of interesting, actually. We have people now listening and watching from around the world. And um, that's really cool. And um, so, you know, for, for all yeah. these years, you're on. Say again, Alex? Want me to pull that up? Sure. For all these years, we had, you know, we were San Diego based and we were San Diego centric and then Southern California thereafter and then national and whatever. But mostly, you know, we talked about stuff that was local. So um, we, we see the stats. We still know that everybody's in Southern California and then it expands thereafter. You want you, you got them for me real quick. You want countries or you want states? I'll take countries first. Countries right. for 500, Alex. All right. Let me put everybody on screen so I don't have to keep switching here. All right. Okay. Uh, number one, United States of America, the majority. Los Estados of Unidos, see. The majority. Number two, any guesses? I'll say Mexico. Canada. Mexico is correct. Ding, ding, Mexico. ding. Number three is the one that will get you. Number three. Who do you guys think? I'm going to go top five. Number three is, it's weird. It's like Baja Rain or something like that. It's not, it's not right now. Uh, Austria. Lond Europe. Well, well, Europe's not a country, dog. London. Country. London is not a country, country as well. What? London, the city. <laughs> <laughs> what? For reals? I know That's, that. This sounds like some tomfoolery. <laughs> uh, this is the kind of shit my kids London. would say, man. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, it's Serbia. Okay. Serbia. Serbia. Number three is Serbia. I'm sending out special Serbian love to all my Serbian brothers and sisters out there that are checking in from Serbia on YouTube. Much love, Serbia. Uh, uh, uh. Number four, any guesses? Australia. It's on the Western Hemisphere. Um, that is going to make it confusing for both me and John. It's in the, it's in the <laughs> Americas. Uh, uh, Canada? Canada, number four. I already yeah. said that. That was my first guess. And, yeah, but that was then. But it was wrong. And uh, number five, 
in Europe. In Europe. Not is it London. A, is, it a, is that a country, London? <laughs> it's not London. The country of France. The country of France is not in our top 10. French how don't about, love us. How about what? Germany? Germany is your winner. Top five. Rounded out by Australia, six. The United Kingdom, a.k.a. London, number seven. United Arab Emirates, number eight. Israel. You can't, you can't, wait, 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 wait. You cannot say UK, then say London. You guys make it say UK. Don't try to switch. I was trying it. to turn it. I don't need I your help. trying to put your London your help. into perspective. No. no. And number 10, Belgium. Belgium. There you go. There you hey, go. I want to say guten tag to all of my German brothers and sisters out there. Um, Frankfurt in the house. Just want to say that. Okay. And then to all, all of my Israelis, okay? To all the Israel, um, shalom, shaloha, brothers and sisters. And let me say something. I just finished watching Fauda season three last night. You talk about if you guys understood how insane this show was, because everybody's got a show. Like I haven't seen everything yet. Like um, I watched Ozark, but there's another one called like Outer Banks on Netflix that I haven't watched yet. That one's new though. I haven't I think, seen it yet. I think that's new. Fauda, I just watched the end of season three. And if you thought the end of Ozark was crazy, the end of Fauda is unbelievable incredible so i'm gonna assume that nobody watched f1 last night not yet but i have it on my list okay okay you guys so want to play this game for with states yeah go with states and then because i guess I, I was going to make the point about i was going to make the point about where we were going to start today go ahead <laughs> 30 minutes in this is where we're going to start this is where we always start do the show. We always get warmed up getting loosened up go ahead okay number one california obviously let's go quick top five anybody want to guess or should i just go through it california number one i'd say florida number two no. Texas. Texas, number two. Texas is two. Hmm. Nevada, number three. Mm -hmm. Arizona, Vegas, shout out. Number four. Arizona. And this one surprised me. Kansas, number five. New York. Oh. KU. New York is right after Kansas. KU, red pimp, spreading the word. Yeah. Red pimp in the house. Okay, so here was my point. We, we understand that there are people listening in lots of different places. I'm going to take a guess that a lot of those folks probably have a connection somehow to Southern California or even more specifically to San Diego. But I want to start today to everybody around the world. Cause again, I have some friends that are like, dude, you guys don't talk enough New York sports for me. And I love you guys, but when you're talking San Diego sports, it doesn't work for me. I'm going to start today with a little bit of San Diego because this is this is really not surprising at all, but I'm going to make a quick comment here. They moved to LA already. They haven't moved to LA yet. Okay, but Alex was wearing his jersey yesterday. His his, his shirt Forgot. patch is still available. Patches still available. Okay, you can replace your SD on your SDSU gear with the LA. You can replace it. Okay, look, said it yesterday. If you're JD Wicker, the athletic director at San Diego State, don't go playing the role of Mark Fabiani. Please don't try and sell people on, we've got lots of alumni in LA, and if we have to go play up there, we got plenty of people that are going to want to come see us play. That's not accurate. You may have a lot of alumni up there. The likelihood of them <laughs> coming to see you play is probably pretty slim. Probably because many, many of them would resent you for doing it, would be first and foremost. Um, you, you can't play that card. Mark Fabiani tried to play that card. We got 25% of our audience comes from LA. We're going to be fine in LA. They're going to love us in LA. And guess what? Nobody even knows they're alive in LA. San Diego State would not be trying to get onto the LA radar. They just need a place to play. But the threats come off as very Fabiani-esque. And now, as the story goes today, and Alex, maybe you fill in the details here, but the story goes that the city of San Diego is now about to spend more money on their law firm in an effort to extend and probably get a better deal. So this whole stadium thing with San Diego State, it is in complete reverse right yeah. now. Did you get a lot of tweets yesterday saying, like, how can you blame J.D. Wicker or San Diego State? Like, how many times does the city government have to screw up for you officially to start trashing the city government? And I was like, have you guys not paid attention? We've been slamming this piece of shit city government for so many years. It's just like, it's a different thing when you are threatening the same exact thing that the Chargers threatened and ended up doing that now you're doing it with a university with the name San Diego State on it that you cannot physically pick up the university and move it over there. That being said, um, the city government putting in an extra $150,000 to get a deal done. What did we vote for? 
Did, did, am I mistaken here? Did we not already have the land valued at X amount of money by like five different things and we're still negotiating? Did we not vote exactly on this is the plan we all voted for, which, by the way, only 54 percent so 46 percent of people did not want to do it. Just saying, what did we vote for? I thought the land value was already listed. I thought we already had an idea. What are we negotiating about? Like, this is am I missing something. This is why the land should have been given to Soccer City because this conversation would have already been over. The building probably would have already been under construction, and something would have been being done with that space. Man, you can't leave politicians to their own vices because things go sideways. Like this has gone sideways now because in politics, someone has to win. Well, that's let me, the way that it goes. You know what, though, dude? Like, I'll give you an example. There's going to be a mayoral race in this town in November. And one of the people who's going to be running for mayor is Barbara Bree. She's a city council person. She's saying, hell no, man. We're not giving this land away. See? This is an insanely valuable piece of land. And I'm going to hang my hat on. I'm not giving away jack squat even to San Diego State. And that's what I'm going to hang my hat on come November. And so let's spend money now to extend this negotiation so that I can use it later. And I'm not trying to blame Barbara. I don't know her motives and I'm not, I'm just picking on her because she was quoted in, in some of the stuff that I had read today. Yes, there's politics at work here. Yes, there is a, an entitled attitude from San Diego State, like everybody loves us and everybody wants us to build a football stadium for our, our top 25 program and give us this land because we're San Diego State. And look, I wanna just say one thing, remember, when the people voted in favor of San Diego State West, many people were hoodwinked into believing that that was San Diego State's initiative. It wasn't. It was a very wealthy person who was trying to construct all of the new buildings that were going to be done there. And by the same token, there were a lot of Mission Valley developer types, rich guys, who were just trying to defeat Soccer City under the assumption that they were going to not ever get the San Diego State thing done eventually anyway. So they would, if they beat Soccer City, they'll just kick the can down the road. There's so much dirtiness to all of this story. It actually makes me want to vomit. And I, it actually makes yeah. me not even really want to talk about it because it, it makes me feel that slimy because all parties involved And to wasn't me, that the whole point of the election was to get rid of the politics of it all and let the people decide? Well, yeah. here's what the people decided though. The people decided that the city can negotiate with San Diego State to come up with a deal so that San Diego State can purchase the property. That's what the people voted for. The people voted to say, no, don't give it to a private developer. Don't give it to Soccer City. Have the city and the university negotiate. And now the city is saying, yeah, we're here to negotiate. And the university is here to say, but the people said it's our land. And therein lies the fight. Yeah. And so look, not only do you have an ongoing fight, and by the way, just trust me, please trust me on this. And you all know what I'm about to say. This never gets done. Been saying never. It. Yep. Wait, we yep. have that we have that sound bite that I obviously can't play, but Jack McGrory is saying this is gonna be done by twenty twenty two. JD Wicker saying it's gonna be done by twenty twenty two. Listen, you know how many people I know that were San Diego State fans, alumni, who are smart people. Who, and I would say to them, how are you voting? Are you voting on the Soccer City thing? Or are you voting on San Diego State West? And they go, San Diego State West. And I go, just curious why. And they go, because it's San Diego State. I'm all for San Diego State. And I go, but you don't even know what's going on. They're like, no, it's just, I'm for San Diego when State. When it comes to politics, people oftentimes don't vote in their own best interest. This piece of land will become a pawn in the next election because it was left unsettled. And now it is going to be in purgatory as, until someone cuts a check to fix the situation. I voted yes on both just because I figured something could get done. But at this point now, I I am even more on San Diego State side. Like, just get it done. I don't give a shit what you got to do, but you're embarrassing yourself at this point. And I know the city government has been embarrassed, so I don't think they may not, they may be immune to that by now. There's little but shame in it. There's little Diego, shame in government. Dude. San Diego State is starting to embarrass themselves. And that comes from a, a big, passionate, diehard alum. All right, let me keep going then, because it's just real quick to, to wrap this, this conversation up about San Diego State. And like I said, I'm going to keep it local for, to, be, to start. So now San Diego State and USD in basketball, series over, series over. Now, you may remember, for those of you that have been with us for a while, we've talked to Brian Dutcher about this. We've talked to Steve Fisher about this. For San Diego State, there's no upside. That's been their complaint, 
if San Diego State loses to USD, it always comes back to haunt them. If San Diego State beats USD, it never comes back to help them. If you're San Diego State, you're in a very unwinnable situation. If you cancel the series, you're a jerk, which they have. If you lose to them, you're going to get bit in the butt later in the season. And if you beat them, you were supposed to beat them, so nobody's really impressed. I understand why San Diego State bailed on USD. However, I must tell you, in a city that is starved for sporting content that's hyper-local, and a city that's lost the NFL team, has the college football team with the audacity to threaten to go somewhere like anybody cares. You barely can get anybody in town to care. The Major League Baseball team offered their stadium to help them, and they've pulled the offer off the table. Baseball hasn't started, and who knows what the Padres will be if and when it does, and I'll get to that later on because, as I told you earlier in the week, I'm usually wrong. Baseball's coming back. I've got some some verification on that. I'll tell you about it. Um, So, look, if you're San Diego State, you're taking away one piece of big sports content that San Diego loves. So now you lost the Chargers. Baseball season hasn't started, and the Padres haven't been good. And now San Diego State is canceling a local rivalry. I think, again, they can't win because they're expected to win. They lose big time should they lose the game. Um, It serves San Diego State no good to keep the rivalry going other than for the fans of sports in the town. Do I really, really care about San Diego State USD? Not right now, I don't. But when the game is played and I go to the game and I make it every year and I, everybody's kind of there, it, it's a sporting event in this town and it's being, it's being stopped by San Diego State because they don't have any value. There's really no value add for San Diego State. It's another event taken off the table. We lost eight weeks. We lost eight Sundays of home games from the NFL and now you're going to lose something that people, whether you thought it was important or not, by the way, every time USD beat San Diego State, that team wasn't good. The San Diego State team wasn't good that lost to USD. So that was kind of like an early indicator that you can back off off this team because they're probably not any good. And for USD, it was an opportunity for them to showcase themselves on a higher platform across people who mostly cheer for San Diego State. So it's unfortunate. It seems like they chickened out on an opportunity to continue something that was fun for the city. And that's sad. Alex, you're the big San Diego State honk here. You're the one who's in Sports Illustrated as Mm -hmm. Coach Fisher is cutting down the nets and you're standing there looking at him like the basketball god that he is in your life that night. Um, As a San Diego State alum, what do you think about San Diego State bailing on the series? Um, I think I've always thought the same thing is they should always beat USD on the court. And so it should never be a thought as to why not play them. Exactly. You schedule San Diego Christian because you know you're going to beat their ass every single year. You should have that same mentality when you play San Diego. Now, I know you played them at Petco Park, and that was a stupid thing looking back. But other than that, they've only beat you once. Like, what risk are you really taking here? It was at, Besides the Petco game, they lost in 2018, and that was it. I think 2005 was the one before that. To me, it's it's you're taking away something that I think the players look forward to. I think that – Obviously, the fans of both schools look forward to. Uh, Is it a big deal in the grand scheme of things? No. But I always think of it as this way. If you're going to be a Jordan top five school, act like you're a Jordan top five school and schedule whoever the hell you want because you have the confidence that you're going to go in in there and beat them. That's always been my thing. And I still think that that they should play USD and crush them every year and and never look back and not count it as a bad loss because they hardly beat you anyways. Two out of the last 15 years. I like it. All right. I'm bringing a strong opinion today. I like it. All right. Let me keep going here. Uh, On a Wednesday afternoon, being presented by Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. By Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. By Tory Holistics, where you can save 20% by using our promo code GRANDE. Um, On Wednesday, I'm going from local right into national. Here it goes. The Last Dance. We saw episodes 9 and 10 this past Sunday night. It has been probably the most talked about thing in sports in America. More so than NASCAR coming back. More so than a golf match with four guys who actually turned into decent ratings. More than the UFC with three fights in nine nights. The number one most talked about sports story in America has been the Michael Jordan documentary, The Last Dance. 
and the ratings have been off the charts. But I got to tell you, I love the aftermath of it all. <laughs> I, I love the conversation thereafter. It's interesting to me that a guy like Scott Burrell, you mentioned this the other day, Browner, never was interviewed. He was ridiculed. He was bullied, but he was never interviewed. Whereas a guy like Horace Grant came to the Bulls, won championships with the Bulls, moved on and beat the Bulls with Orlando, and yet Horace Grant was interviewed for this documentary. Now, Horace Grant goes on a radio show in Chicago and says a so-called documentary. Horace Grant went into a story, and I'm not sure if everybody's heard this or not, but that he didn't play well in a game. They get onto a team <laughs> charter. He tells the flight attendants, see that guy right there? He doesn't eat. You don't give him any food because he played like shit tonight. And Horace Grant said, and it was very funny the way he said it, but I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase. Like, man, ain't no man going to come take my food. If, you, if you're going to come try and take my food, I'm going to whip your ass. You know, that's the way I read it. I'm not sure exactly how he said it, but that's the way I read it. And so what I love about what Horace Grant is doing is this. Michael Jordan came off as a giant bully, right? Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan comes off as this big giant bully. And one guy that's absolutely not going to back down to him, at least not now, is Horace Grant. Now, Horace Grant would tell you back then, Michael Jordan didn't want none of this smoke. It was easy for Michael Jordan to punch Steve Kerr in the face, but he wasn't going to fight Horace Grant. So I like the fact, <laughs> whether it's true or false, I like the fact that Horace Grant is not just continuing to kiss Michael Jordan's ass. Oh my God. Uh, I, but I, but I'm, what I think what's interesting about it is, is that why did Jordan put him in this documentary? Like he could have easily have clipped him out, but he gave him his chance to talk. That's for sure. I, I love all this, man. The, the aftermath yeah. of this is and, beautiful. And he was saying that, like, I don't even know why Scotty even came out in this because he looked like trash. And I was like, wait a minute. Scotty was the one that said, I wouldn't go back in the game if I had a second chance. Scotty was the one that looked like a hero in that game when he with the back thing. Like, and Scotty was in it a lot. So I don't know, Horace Grant. The only thing that he was really, truly pissed about was that he, Jordan said he was the snitch of Sam Smith's book, and that's all that matters. So that's the only thing that stood out to Horace Grant. Horace Grant, don't be a bit of bitch, okay? A what? A, a bit bitter of bitch. bitch. Don't be a bitter bitch. I can repeat it again if you need. Bro, look, you bailed on the Bulls, so therefore you lost out on the chance to get the other three titles. That's what you won't let go. Yes, you are the rat in the Sam Smith's book because your also comment was, oh, you need two sources to write a book. Sam Smith's a journalist. You need two sources. And we're yeah, still good bitch. friends. You, you was one, and you're still good why friends you, with him. Why you call him a bitch all the time? Because Horace Grant is being a bitch, okay? <laughs> you were in the documentary. You were actually portrayed positively. The story about you being on a plane and not eating has nothing to do with it. And by the way, he told that story three times to three different publications. Two being uh, one was Shannon Sharp. Another was this radio station in Chicago. And he also told it to a newspaper and told it three different times because I've heard that story three different times in three different ways. So Horace Grant, at least get your lies straight, bro. You the snitch in the book. Don't be trying to get mad at Mike. What's wrong with you, bro? You know, he gave I you three titles. I assume that he's the snitch in the book because yes. when you say things like, yeah, me and him are really good friends. It's like when you're the player and you're being accused of, of – being a snitch, I would think you'd probably want to separate yourself from the writer and go, what are you talking about? He's a writer. I'm a player. But instead he's saying, yeah, we're really good friends. And then the whole part about you have to have two sources to write a book. Who, who wrote that rule? So of right, course, right. Of course I assume that Horace Grant is the snitch. What I, all I'm saying is this, I like that Horace Grant is not like everybody else in the world, just a big suck up who says, no, I'm just willing to take it. I think Michael Jordan's a bully. And if I were six foot 10 and I were Horace Grant's size, I'd say, bring it on, big boy. Because you know what? I think, I think mano y mano, forget that you're the goat and I'm just a role player. If you want to go man to man, I'm willing to do that. Now, you know, not me, if it's just me, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm not Dude, willing to do that. It's Horace, me. But if I were Horace Grant, of course, I'd want to fight. The reason why Michael Jordan never went after Horace Grant, I said this initially when I talked about him going after Steve Kerr, Bill Winterton, Judd Bush, or Luke Longley of those sorts, Scott Burrell. Because Horace Grant did his job. Horace Grant played well. So therefore, if you played well, Michael Jordan didn't really mess with you because he didn't have a problem with you because you was going up on his level. 
Horace Grant was there for those battles with the Pistons. So Michael Jordan respected Horace Grant, and he never went after Horace Grant like that. Horace Grant is bitter, okay? Sometimes when you get dumped by a female, you don't let it go. That's all this. But he did the dumping. He thought he did the dumping because he thought Jordan was done. Then Jordan came back out of nowhere, poof, pow, into Dennis Robin. Now you've been substituted. So the hey, new but girl, he got his fourth. He got his fourth. With who? The Lakers. What do you mean with who? Boy, you finna tell me that that meant something? What was Horace Grant on the Lakers? What? What do you was mean? Was he important? He got five oh, rebounds man. and six points in the playoffs. All right, cool. Have fun with that. Hey, got a oh. fourth ring, dude. Yeah, uh, Charles Barkley ain't got no ring. Reggie Miller ain't got no ring. Carmelo ain't got no ring. Horace got four. <laughs> That's true. No, those, what? Those are, those what do you mean it doesn't what? mean anything? What do you mean it doesn't Did you, mean anything? Wait, 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 wait. So you trying to tell me you read out no, Horace Grant's you. rings in Charles Barkley's career? I'm telling guess, you. What? I'm telling you that to say one ring that doesn't mean anything, ask those four guys if one ring means something. Don't Charles, be dumb, dude. Come on. Charles every, Barkley. Every ring means something. Charles Barkley wouldn't want a ring if he had to get it like Horace Grant got it. Stop it. Come oh, on now. Is. That's not what you said. That is not what you said. And what did I on. say? You said, you, know what you said, what does that ring mean? Ask those four guys what one ring means. Wait, no. First he if, said, if you're, first he if, said, what, what do you mean he got a fourth ring? If you, so he said, you don't even know, you know about it. Because so, it was and irrelevant. By not, and by not knowing about it, now he's getting himself fired up, and now he's just going to defend <laughs> it to the death. We no, all know the because if, if you're a Horace Grant, if you're a Horace Grant, you were the third best player on one of the greatest teams of all time. You didn't turn that around. It was the third best player on a young Orlando Magic team with Penny Hardaway and Shaquille O'Neal, the team that looked like to be the future of the Eastern Conference. And yeah. then you find yourself on the Lakers doing what? Right. No, but that's not what you said. You said, what does it matter, the fourth ring? Dude, he played and he got a ring. What do you mean it doesn't matter? It's a championship. You, it's a, okay. I forgot about it. <laughs> Thank I you. Thank you. If you. No, I did. If you didn't look it up, you wouldn't know he got he a ring the Lakers. The Lakers. He wasn't well, important. Ron Harper was also on the Lakers, wasn't he? Yeah, and Glenn Rice. And they. you think they care about that ring they got? Yes. Because it means Harper, something to them. Ron Harper's role on the – if they start selling off rings, that's going to be the first one to go. How about that? Kevin <laughs> George got six, five. They start, they start, <laughs> selling, they matter. They start selling them things off that lake and we're going to be the first one on eBay. But don't say it doesn't matter, dude. Just because right. you, you weren't the superstar doesn't mean it don't matter. It's not that you weren't the superstar. Ask Derek Fisher if it, his it, rings matter. But Derek, ask Fisher, Derek Fisher. but Derek Fisher's role on ask, the Lakers was vital. Ron Artest. Ask Ron Artest. Vital role on the Lakers. Give me another one. All right, huh? let me just say Kevin this. George. Listen, he his ring's going to be on eBay if he they ain't five. already. All right, now you're just going to pick and choose. They right. want a ring, it matters. All oh, right. goodness. All right, well, I want to keep going here because – Horace by the Grant. Way, Horace Grant, my, I was so glad to read Horace Grant. A.K.A. Ho, Ho Grant, stop it. Yeah, I, I love reading his comments. And then and this morning I go on the side and I see my father – my dad has a debate up. Did Horace Grant go too far on his comments on Michael Jordan? And like 78% of people are saying, no, I loved it. Like, I like that somebody finally stood up to Michael Jordan. I don't care if it's 30 years after the fact or 20 years after the fact. Horace Grant looked big. Like every time they did an interview with him, the angle, he looked big. Like if I, I, I think if I were Horace fat Grant, I'd grab, word. I'd grab maybe fat, I'd grab Michael Jordan by his little, I'd beat his <laughs> An ass. I'm not taking his I wasn't trap. trying to defend Horace. I wasn't trying to. Yeah, you were. You gonna tell me he won a title with the Lakers? Like, oh damn, about no title with the Lakers. You the seventh man. The faster you talk, the less I can hear you. But all I'm saying, yeah. I wasn't trying to defend Horace Grant. All I was saying was that's cool that he went up with Horace Grant. I guarantee you, there's other players on those teams that never that didn't come out documentary that would go up against Jordan too. Man, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying I like the fact that not everybody has to kiss the goat's ass everywhere he goes. You know, that that's all I'm trying to say, that I like the aftermath. Here, I'll give you more of the aftermath. Paul Pierce, the former NBA player, the former Boston Celtic player. Paul Pierce gets into this conversation on ESPN where now he, again, because you can't go anywhere without having the LeBron versus Michael conversation. Which is a good sign for LeBron. Which, and then Paul Pierce goes into this whole diatribe about how LeBron is not a top five player in the league. And no, well, no, no. Correction of all of time. Of all time. Excuse of all me. Time. Of all That's time. very of important. All, it is important. Excuse me. Of all time. I'm doing a lot of things here at once as I'm pulling stuff up on the screen and I'm yapping Respect. at the same time. Respect, Respect to you. Okay. So, Alex, are you going to play this for everybody? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and play it. I don't have an obligation. I to didn't say he wasn't the greatest of all time. I did not you say just said he he's wasn't. not. He's not top five on your ring. That's that's the oh, way this whole thing came You want to hear my top five? You want to hear it again? 
Sure. You want to hear it again? Jordan. Sure, let me know. Kareem. Russell. And you know who the fourth one is? Magic. Who, who's, who's the fifth? And now you know who's in my top five? I'm not going to say nothing right now. Kobe Bryant. Come on. <laughs> Kobe Bryant. That's my top five. Mark <laughs> <laughs> pause. I, I love that that pause where he can't remember who his fourth and his fifth are. I love that pause. Let me think of a uh, magic. Uh, and my fifth one. Who I play against? Who I playing against? Kobe. Kobe. <laughs> yeah, I know. I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. And I see uh, our boy, the Red Pimp, has made a, a return engagement. Finally, back on sided. The Red Pimp is out there. I'll ask you guys this question: Do you agree with Paul Pierce? on leaving LeBron out of his top five players of all time. He's got Jordan, Kareem, Bill Russell, Magic, and Kobe. Do you agree that LeBron is not a top five all-time Browner? Look, man, I got to be honest with y'all. I agree with Paul Pierce, man. I honestly agree with Paul Pierce. Uh, it depends on how you look at Bill Russell. The only person who I think you can negotiate out of that would be Kobe Bryant. But at this point in time, because of his untimely death, I think Kobe Bryant has gained stature that he didn't have before. But outside of that, that group all has five titles. That group statistically, those are those are pillars of the game. You cannot tell the story of the history of the NBA without those five guys. Again, you can argue Kobe Bryant out of that. That's the person that, to me, if you want to switch that out, I'm not going to twist your arm over it. You have a that That is debatable. But those other four dudes... If it wasn't for Magic Johnson, the NBA probably would be nowhere near it is what it is today between him and Larry Bird. Bill Russell was really the pioneer for African-Americans in the sport of basketball. We all know what Michael Jordan did for the game of basketball. Who was that other person in there? Kareem. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, to me, is 1A, 1B with Michael Jordan as the greatest player of all time. If you look at Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's stats, his life as a basketball player, no one's done better than that. But if you look at his career in the NBA, how could you argue that he is not the greatest player of all time? Well, Grande, I got it 60-40 right now that LeBron is overrated. What do you say? Uh, me personally, I do not think LeBron is overrated at all. I, I mean, don't either. If you wanna if you wanna talk about top five, that's that's all, you know, subjective to what you believe. Um, like I agree with Browner in this in the fact that of those five, Kobe's the one that you could take out. Um just, I just think as a player, I'm not even talking about titles. I don't want to, like, if you just talk about player, LeBron's probably top three. Like, he's that good at every aspect of the game. Um, but if you're, if you bring in titles and MVPs and awards and teammates and all that, that's when you start having the discussion. But I'm just talking about pure basketball player, Jordan, Kareem, LeBron. I don't think there's any better. Okay. So hit that, hit that, the red pimp. He's trying to get himself back on this scoreboard. By the way, Bernard Thompson, who gets into our YouTube <laughs> chat. Brother, I don't know how you do it. I, I'm trying to keep up with you, dog, and I don't know how you do it. This guy, Troutfish, on the... Alex, I don't know if you can put it up on the screen real quick. This guy, Troutfish, on the sided leaderboard, he was up in the 300 range, and Bernard just kept gnawing at him and coming to get him, and he was in his sights, and then Bernard just overtook him. And he's got more points now by like 50 points. Bernard is winning this Amazon gift card every week on sided. He's going to collect and get a 4K 75-inch TV here shortly, dude. I guess so. Y'all might just want to just so. give him the TV right now. Just well, give him the TV. <laughs> hey, hey, Red Pimp, we like that content. That's good stuff. Speaking of all this LeBron, Jordan. Horace um, Grant. Art, Ho don't Grant. do that. Don't do that. Ho <laughs> Grant. Don't bring up Ho Grant around here. Documentary, dude. I mean, <laughs> I never thought I'd get in a fight about Horace Grant. And you oh, just did. Yeah. Uh, all the talk about this Jordan doc when it's all said and done. Um uh, the, the conversation that we had yesterday with this guy, Dylan, I, I want to go back to this for a quick second. For those of you that missed it yesterday, we had this guy on, he was uh, from The Bachelor and The Bachelorette and The Bachelor in Paradise. And his name is Dylan Barber and he's here in San Diego. And by the way, he told a great story yesterday about his startup, which is called Visor. I downloaded the Visor app yesterday. And when we were done, I went for a walk to collect my 10,000 steps. And then I donated a meal, which I thought was a really cool idea. Like, I thought I had to do the working out and then I put up the money to donate the meal. And I thought, well, wait a second, what's in it for me? What's in it for me is I do the exercise and somebody else actually pays the money and donates the meal to a needy family, uh, which I thought through Feeding America, which I thought was awesome. So what I got from people was this though yesterday, holy shit, this dude from the bachelorette 
this 25 year old little white guy, pretty boy is going toe to toe with Browner. Stop it. On Jordan versus LeBron. And just because Browner got loud and just because Browner go. started trying to intimidate the guest, Here we the go. guest was not intimidated and came back strong. Alex, what did you think of Dylan's performance yesterday? Uh, now that he's not on camera here, uh, a little weak, to be honest thank, with you. Oh. Thank uh, you. Uh, look, at, look at this. Did you, not, did, you not see, did you not see me like try and help <laughs> Dylan? Yeah, but that's only because it wasn't Dylan. It, it's Stephen B. No, when I know Stephen that. Stephen B that goes you, on a rant. You can't stop Stephen B. You did steamroll him in like you didn't let him talk kind of way. That's why you got to get loud, which I did. I But I know you. So I know that I have to get loud if you're going to get loud. So he didn't know that. He just kind of turtled. So the debate itself was was one way to Browner. But Dylan's like actual points were not all that great. Dude, he oh. said LeBron had less blocks because of the three-point line. And that's why I just said, all right. It was actually a good – I mean, that's actually – actually, I actually that was one of the ones that I agreed with him. Yeah, that was a good guess. But no, no, that's not – think on your feet. That's yeah. really think on your feet on that's, that No, because, listen, that's not a good get. Because there is more three-pointers shot, you should have more blocks as a perimeter defender who's bigger and faster than the guy you're probably guarding. Michael Jordan was a perimeter defender. How why would he have more blocks? Well, Jordan was also blocking guys that are white and five foot two. So, but if you're bigger and you're stronger, so and everybody you're faster. In the NBA. No, not as LeBron. Not as LeBron. No, not Come as LeBron. Now. No, 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 but that's what the whole discussion was about. You know whether or not you want to build your team around LeBron in his prime or Michael in his prime. It wasn't about who's the greatest of all time. Right, and that's that's the nuance of the conversation. Alex, I'm not sure if you're pulling it up on the screen right now, but here it is. I mean, here's Browner and Dylan going toe to toe on side. Where Browner's on the majority side of eighty percent, I voted on Browner's side and took Michael Jordan. And and here's Dylan standing over here with his man Bernard Thompson and Scott Delvins. I'm just going through this right now to see who's in here arguing. Dylan versus Dunk on any fool. Hey man, to come into somebody's show, not know what the hell's going on, and have some black dude screaming at you at the top whoa, of his whoa. Be What are you doing? Man. What? That's not a way to prefer, preference uh, that. You gotta take what? that. You gotta reverse what that one. What are you one. doing? Well, yesterday, you told me your blackness intimidates me. Well, yeah, but don't come out and say some black dude. <laughs> Dude, you're on the receiving end of this. You don't know who you are. And the next thing you know, you got some guy going, no, 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 no. Let me finish. Let me finish. No, no, well, no. What's the Shut difference up. between if it's a, a black dude or a big fat white guy it, being that loud? What if it's Rush Limbaugh yelling at you? What he, if it's Alex he, Jones yelling at you like see? that? I don't even know. No, dude, he knows that he's intimidating the guest. <laughs> don't you do that to me. Don't, you know it's true. <laughs> don't you I, wish you, weren't, on I me. wish you weren't blurry right now so you could defend yourself, Browner. I'm on Team Browner right now. All see? right. See what you're doing? Oh, yeah, what if it's that? Alex Jones' big fat ass coming in yelling at you just because he's a Alex white Jones? guy? Guy that goes yells crazy conspiracy theories about I don't even know who about he is. Sandy Hook and shit. Like, what if this guy's coming know. in? I know you don't know who he is, but people know yeah. who he is. Like, what's the difference if someone's loud and yelling at you and you don't know who you're on with? Mm -hmm. Dude, you're looking at the guy on screen. <laughs> Literally, what <laughs> the I'm guy, thinking. Like, the guy is cares? screaming. At, the guy is screaming <laughs> at you. And by the way, oh like, hey, God. I'm not trying to be an NBA expert here, okay? I'm not. Listen, I just wanted to have a little bit of fun and mix it up. And the next thing I know, I got somebody screaming at me who's just who cannot live unless he is considered right and wins the debate. And it's like you guys were giving me shit the other day, like, hey, when comedians come on or when singers come on, you try and out sing them. You try and out comedian them. This is what Browner did to the guest. He intimidated the <laughs> guest yesterday with all of his assets. <laughs> Dude, I did not do that. What are you talking? <laughs> you're, you're, you're a revisionist you history. Don't, wait, you don't think you yelled at him though? Huh? You don't think you don't think you yelled at him? No. Oh, okay. No. Well, that part I agree with Scott. You did yell at him. I, well, you yell at everybody. All right, that's just the way I talk, man. I don't hear it. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't hear, hear it. The shit out of a lot of people. Why do you think people were afraid of Richard Sherman? That's different. Why? Because she was white. Yep. And she's female. Yep. See, I would never. I would never. Help. You know what would help if we could actually hear ourselves in our headphones. Yeah, I can't, can't, yeah. I can't hear myself. Me neither. I can't hear myself in my headphones either, which is the weirdest thing. I can hear you guys perfectly and can't hear myself at all. And when we do try and like talk at the same time, what happens is on this, it kind of fuzzes itself out. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times things get missed, which is why yesterday I was trying to go, calm down, dude, because we can't, we can't even understand. 
You know, listen, man, it was uh, I'm glad uh, Alex tried to go WWE manager and distract the referee while somebody hit me with a chair during the debate. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. It was cool. Oh, shout, out, shout out to Dylan, though. It was fun. He had a good time. We had a good time. That's what he came he for. He really did have a good time. And uh, and he was stoked because he was a guy who, you know, yesterday we were talking about this. You know, he grows up playing ball, goes to college and plays, you know, lower division two, whatever kind of football, which takes a real commitment. And now he just wants to be, you know, he's a dude, but everybody looks at him as this, uh, you know, bachelorette pretty boy. So I don't want to switch topics here on you, but is this like uh, the man crush segment? Because uh -oh. it sounds like it. Oof. Well, I'll tell you what, I should put the man crush segment together for tomorrow. Oof. It's usually a Thursday thing, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's it's whenever we want now. It's Corona okay. rules, man. Okay. I'm going to put it down on my list. Man crush power rankings tomorrow. Browner, you uh, may not make it. Dealing well, number one. Listen, it's probably because I'm black. No. It's because you're it's loud. Cause you're, it's because you're tall. No, that's what it is. So you're a heightist? <laughs> I'm a heightist now. <laughs> uh, it's okay. not your blackness. It's your yeah. loud and tallness. That's, that's what, what it is. is. That's how, what about how about yesterday? I mean, how about yesterday when, when Browner said to me, when Browner said to Dylan, he was kind of saying, you know, hey, I'm going to beat him in a decathlon. Why? Because Scott's old and Jewish. Now, wait a second, Alex, mm -hmm. where were you to defend me? To say, hey, wait See, a second. No, well, no, you're, no. Very, you're very well equipped to defend yourself. Oh, okay. Browner's not? I oh, Browner, oh, Browner, I, I that's too bad, I dog. Didn't say, I did not say it was because you were Jewish. I said <laughs> you were an old Jewish man. That's right. Yeah, it's no different. one ever says that about, like, Catholics, this old Catholic man. Why is right. always gonna be old Jewish guy for? Know, what, what are you the doing hell, right now? What, what are you I didn't put product right? in it, and it's like you can't stop touching my fan. It's like, well, <laughs> dude, nothing you're doing is changing what's going nothing on. Nothing at all. I it know. looks it's the same. Perfect. I know. I put product in it. It looks exactly the fucking same. I'm wasting <laughs> money. <laughs> 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 okay, let me uh, let me keep going here. On a Wednesday afternoon, being presented by Corky's Pest Control, one 1102 being presented by Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. And being presented by Tory Holistics, you're going to save 20% with our promo code GRANDE. And we're going to tell you more about that in a minute with the highlight of the day, man. But before I get on to that. So uh, I told you guys my dad is a, uh, he's a boxing uh, like uh, commissioner, commissioner, like super supervisor of, of boxing. You know what I mean? Mm hmm and he's retired now. He's got he's got kind of the retired life in Florida. And um, so these fights were happening up in Jacksonville. And the Florida State Boxing Commission said to my father, you know, hey, we need you to come up and do these fights. And my dad was like, dude, three fights, nine days. Um, I'm in a hotel for all that time. All these fighters flying in from around the world. You know what? I don't, I don't think I want to go do that. So he didn't. Now, would you guys have gone and been an official with an MMA fight for three fights in nine nights and been around all these people from around the world and around the country. Would you have done it? That's well, a no for me, dog. For me, be no, only because your dad said that the commissioners and refs didn't get tested. That is confusing to me as to why everybody else got tested except those people, especially oh, refs who were in the ring with them. Yeah, I didn't know about that part. Um, but, uh, but you know, in, in his retired life, he also is a, uh, he does like drug testing for major league baseball because he's down in Florida. So there's, you know, the grapefruit league down there. And so what my dad told me was, and gosh, I hope I don't get him into any trouble. here. <laughs> Nobody knows his name. Yeah. Charles Kaplan. Uh, <laughs> but what my dad told me was, is that he just received word from major league baseball that the drug testing officials that he, he does this, um, they're going to be needed for a three week spring training starting next week. So today is Wednesday, May 19th or 20th? 20th. Okay, today's Wednesday, May 20th. And figure next week, which the Monday would be uh, the well, that's, 25th. That's, that's Memorial Day, the 25th. Okay, so then, okay, go to the 26th, which is Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, so I'll just say this I've been saying I don't think baseball is going to play. And, and Alex said the other day, maybe baseball does play, but maybe some of the stars choose to sit out. Maybe Manny Machado doesn't want to put his health on the line because he's only going to make 10 million this year rather than 30 million. Maybe Clayton Kershaw doesn't want to pitch because he's letting his shoulder get another year of recovery. And he's, he's, you know what? Hey, I, I was going to make 12 million because of the, after the COVID and everything else. And you know what? For 12 million, you guys play, I'll, I'll rest. I thought baseball was going to say no. I thought the players were going to say no, but here's what I can tell you. 
that when the drug testing guys get the notification, hey, we're going back to work next week because baseball is going to start a three-week spring training. Imagine if your goal is to try and get back by 4th of, a, 4th of July. Hey, we're baseball. We're America's pastime. America's birthday, 4th of July, is coming up. This is our 9-11. This is baseball's 9-11. If we can get everybody playing baseball on the 4th of July to celebrate the reopening of America, that's what we need to do because we've talked about this, how baseball could be in trouble and they can't let this season go. If baseball, America's pastime, can get back to playing ball by the 4th of July, it, the math all seems to work out. You have a three-week spring training starting in late May. You get through June. Everybody gets to where they're going. Everybody goes through the, the exercise of how they're supposed to be. And boom, 4th of July, Major League Baseball comes back. So I don't. All, the only part of the story that I can tell you is the guys who do the drug testing are told they're going back to work in spring training next week. That, to me, seems like an indication that baseball is planning on coming back. Fourth of July is the date that everything's coming back in America. Unless like something drastic happens, I think basketball starts that weekend down in Disney in Florida. I think baseball will be back by then. I know NBA wants a big month to get their stuff ready. They're not getting a month. They're going to get like two weeks. But baseball is coming back that weekend. Basketball is going to come back that weekend. Training camps will be around the corner in mid-July as well somehow. I think that... From what I've seen in America, whether we get a second wave or not, this stuff's coming back, man. Health re- or not, it's coming back. The rebirth of America as we know it will begin on July 4th. I'm okay. telling you. All the people sitting cooped up, July 4th is going to be a day that they go, fuck this. It's July 4th. It's time for us to get our independence back. Go to have a picnic. <laughs> isn't that just like so american thing? very american. Like america like not even america 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 right. y'all fourth of july sports barbecue and bitches i don't know the third no. john, <laughs> cougar, no. 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 john cougar mellencamp ain't that america you and me Ain't that America? Oh my God. The sea, baby. Ain't that America? Uh, That's it. Home of the free. Yeah. Do you guys know the song? No, yeah, I have no idea what you're doing. Oh, forget about it. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say fireworks, but I couldn't. No, think no. It's not good. I said uh, pictures uh, instead uh, for some reason. Uh, you, you know what's, you know, by the way, you know what's kind of interesting about that is how all the fireworks shows have all been canceled. Oh you know, like, like 4th of July is going to be the day that America oh. comes back to life and all the freaking fireworks shows have already been canceled. So. Yep. All right, time now for me, hermano numero uno from the 805 Oxnard representing. Time for Grande, the highlight of the day presented by Tori Holistics. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Highlight of the day brought to you by Tori Holistics. You guys know the drill, but the new drill has a little nuance to it. You click Tori Holistics. You go there, and the new promo code is GRANDE, G-R-A-N-D-E, GRANDE. The minimum $75 purchase, you get 20% off Tori Holistics. Today is Wednesday. That means 15% off weed flower. So hit up toriholistics.com slash great friends. Get the promo code to get your 20% off. Okay, I was going to do Mike Tyson, but I feel like (laughs) I should follow up a story from earlier this week. Oh, you finna break the news? You guys remember my sex doll story? Oh, God. Okay, so it's bad news for this FC Soul team, guys. They have now been fined the largest fine (laughs) in Korean soccer history. 100 million Korean won for having the sex dolls in the stands because it brought shame to the league in, in a time where the league is getting such popularity because it's one of the only sports happening but the only leagues happening, they find them 100 million Korean won. How much is that in American dollars? $82,000. Look, man, I got some news for them. I would have never heard of their damn soccer club if it wasn't for them, them uh, porn dolls. So and they might want to look at that again. Let me ask you this question. If you knew that this game was on ESPN2, would you watch it just to see some sex dolls in the stands? Wouldn't that be hilarious? Yes, yeah, I'm in. But I just still don't understand one thing, and somebody's going to have to explain this to me. Who was watching the game and thought to themselves, you see the fake fans 
there. Those women look familiar to me. I feel like I know them from somewhere. Where would I know these <laughs> women from? And then you find out, oh, they're sex dolls. And you go, of course, naturally. That's how I know these girls. I knew they looked familiar. Who knew that they were sex dolls? I've seen the pictures. Their faces are covered with masks. You know, nobody has dildos in their hands. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody's bent over on all fours with their butthole exposed. I mean, here's the uh, here's the uh, here's what the the league said. Thank you. Explain uh, it to me. Viewers <laughs> watching on television quickly pointed out that dolls looked more like sex dolls. So it wasn't just one guy; it was viewers. And here's what the league said: K League regu regulations forbid inappropriate or sexual advertisement. While football authorities accepted that Seoul had not purposely ordered sex dolls, they ruled that given the dolls' appearance, aka holes uh, and characteristics. <laughs> There was ample time from installing them in the seats on Sunday's lunchtime until the evening kickoff to realize that a mistake had been had. So what they're saying is that they they knew they made a mistake, but they still did it anyways. I don't understand. If the girls are all covered up, they're not sex dolls anymore. These are these are rehab sex dolls. These are girls that gave up the sex to become fans. So mm -hmm. they dressed them up in different clothing and they sat them down. Uh, FC Seoul have asked the police to investigate the suppliers of the mannequins oh, God. for possible fraud. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Okay, well, listen, there you have it. There's your highlight of the day, man. It's presented by Tori Holistics. You can save 20% by using the promo code GRANDE. And now, here's a man that asks the question, what is you doing? John Browner, you up. What is... What is you doing? What are you... What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What is you doing? In honor of the upcoming 4th of July, a.k.a. Rebirth America, mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters known as the Caucasians, y'all going to be going back outside. Y'all going to be having All a good right. time. I know y'all like to like go on rivers and inner tube and drink beer and come up with these crazy outdoor ideas. That's what I'm going to need y'all to not do. Don't try to do this, okay? Stay away from this. This will get you on what is you doing at any day, at any point, at any time. Alex, can you please roll There's that video? Plan. Yeah. Hey, dumbasses, you can't break a tree with a tree, fool. <laughs> you can't can do I, it. Can I ask a question before you go off? Because I think this is great, but I don't have it. How come I don't yeah, have it? Yeah, it's from yesterday. Look up yesterday. Yeah. Oh. So, scroll up. Okay, cool. So it's keep going. Two guys so, holding a piece of wood. Mm -hmm, got it, got it. Two guys holding a tree. See, mm -hmm. that's what right. happens. You when you reclassify, you try to be to explain it to people in simple ways. It's just two guys trying to break a piece of wood. No, 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 no. It's two dumbasses running, oh. with, a, running with a tree. <laughs> One on each side, full speed to try to snap it in half. What's the point, man? Ain't y'all got an axe? Y'all country boys, get a get a chainsaw, okay? Yeah. Chop it down the right way. This is stupid. This will get you hurt, man. What oh. is you doing? So okay. I'm on TikTok and. I know Instagram and Twitter, they're like always a week or two behind. I'm figuring out TikTok is where a lot of these vi videos are originating. Mm -hmm. So I have a little background. They were, uh, I believe, in Louisiana, if I remember that correctly, and they needed firewood for their nighttime bonfire. They got to come up with a better way than this. <laughs> but I, have, uh -huh. I have a question, though, but I have a question. You, you started off with. To all my Caucasian brothers and sisters out there, mm -hmm. Fourth of July is coming, and I know you guys are going to be out there doing all your crazy shit, like drinking beer on the river, right? Mm -hmm. okay, but but I want you to take a look at the video. Now, there's the dude on the right, and then there's the dude on the left. What's the dude on the left deal? Uh, they look white to me. Nah, brah. Oh, nah, dude, nah, let's, bro. Go to the, let's go to the tape. Nah, brah. I'm Hold telling on. you, the Hold dude on, on the on. left, the dude on the left is you and the hold dude on. on the right is me oh hold on <laughs> hold on guys we have a bit of a controversy we here. do have a controversy here since everybody's claiming uh, racism and 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 sexism and oh, uh, browner anti-semitism and everything else today oh jb i don't know oh from first no I, he just got a tan that ain't no brother <laughs> no that's a tan that's a tan that's a tan man don't do that that ain't, a, no, that ain't no tan that's a tan that, brother that is a brother right that's there yeah don't try to do that to us that's a tan that is a brother brother uh, I don't listen. That's it. Listen, I might have to throw this on side it and ask the question: Is this a black man <laughs> out here being this stupid, trying to snap a tree in half with another tree? Okay, I got because it looked like a tan to me, but I'll throw it out there. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, 
Because because nobody would ever do such a stupid thing unless they were white, naturally. No, I'm not saying that, but white people love to do country stuff. Well, you yeah. always got to make it about race, man. Well, that's Scott, what I'm trying Scott's to say. always doing that, man. I'm Scott's always you, man. doing that. I'm Scott's got to say See, like, the first, I'm, I'm playing it for the people. For the first two seconds, you're like, okay, maybe he might be black. But then later, he's like, no, it was just a tan. It's a tan. No, tan, man. it's not. It's not. He's a black guy. It's okay. Way to, way to try to way to try to do that. I don't appreciate. Try to that, do what? You Dude, what you did. no, dog. You guys are just. That is a black man. That is not a black man. It is a black man. That's a tan man. It's Louisiana. No, dog. They tan down there. <laughs> <laughs> lots of sun in the bayou. Yeah, the Tell gators. Right the See gators right and that crawfish. That, that dude's a brother, right? Yeah, there. the close. It looks like that close, but when they get away, that's a tan. No. Um, all right. Well, listen. I like shows with no guests sometimes, man. Yes, you it's great. Yell at each other and just yeah. be a little bit racist to each other. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is fun. It's a fun day. So, look, I want to uh, I want to say, as always, thanks to all the great friends, man. If you are in our YouTube chat or if you are in our Facebook chat, man, we just love having everybody here at this time of the day. We've built such a great community. You know, we know the stats say that there are a certain number of people watching and participating while we're on. And then there's a whole bunch more when we're not on in what you would call live. So for us, this community, we all love it, man. It's why we do it every day. Um, and it's why we're continuing to build while other people are contracting because, you know, we're preparing for the future. Alex, you know, you brought it up earlier today that Rogan's going to make a hundred million dollars and the days of anybody in radio making the huge money are gone. Why are we going back to radio? And and when I say back to radio, you know, I, I was saying to Bill Hagen today, we might want to change the, what we call this. We might want to say 1090 broadcast podcast. I, I don't even know because because really what you're doing is you're taking the, the podcast format and you're broadcasting it on terrestrial airwaves. It's it's the broadcast of a podcast. And so uh I thought that was a really interesting thing. I don't know where I got sidetracked other than thinking about all this work and time that's going into getting 1090 back on the air. You know, it's kind of like a stadium. Do you need to build a stadium nowadays with the world of social distancing? Do you need to be on radio in the world of $100 million podcasters? Uh, yeah, because that's one hundred one guy got that $100 million. Yeah, right. <laughs> we we, we got to we, we got to get ours till we can get that hundred billion. Yeah, Joe, we need we need fourteen hundred more episodes before anybody's going to give us a hundred million. <laughs> hey, listen, thank you to Corky's Pest Control one 1102 Thank you to Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services eight five eight three seven six twelve ninety nine. Thank you to Tory Holistics, where you can save twenty percent by using our promo code Grande. Shout outs to Rock and Wine Grande. Tours, the Total Tea Clinic. SMSglobal.com. I can't say enough about these guys, and I, I, I should say more. It doesn't matter what business you're in. You've got to communicate with people now. We're open. We're clean. We're wearing gloves. We're wearing masks. We won't touch you. Everybody's had their temperature taken. You need to communicate to your audience, whoever your audience is, and text message is the most effective way to do that. Use our partners, SMSglobal.com and CoastCarePartners.com. Hey, look, if you're looking for a new job right now in the healthcare industry, you want to help people, use our, our referral code, great friends, uh, and go, go to coastcarepartners.com up in the upper right corner. They've got a whole bunch of job listings and, uh, and use our referral code, great friends. Big Brown, any final words? I come in peace. Shout out till next time. Grande? Uh, shout out, Horace Grant. Get that fourth. Why? 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 Nam Namaste. Wow. Yeah. Shout out to all of my great friends who are helping us build the sided community. I am having so much fun with all of this. Get in on the red pimps debate. Okay. Get in on my dad's Horace Grant debate, Browner. It's just waiting for you. Whole Grant. Okay? Whole Grant. And, and get in on the Browner versus Dylan on the Jordan versus LeBron in their primes. Keep pumping the content. Uh, I'm telling you guys, I'm literally not even using the website anymore. I go into my phone, I've got my apps, I've got my sided app, I open the sided app and I use the sided mobile app, which is literally now exactly like the website, only a hundred times faster. And um, I think- You wanna show it off it. a little bit? Well, I would like to show it off, but I've got a, I got a, well here, I mean, look, if you go to the website right now, 
And um, you just click on, if you just put the website up on the screen, I don't know if you can split the screen, it's exactly the same. I mean, everything that's on the website is now on the app. And I'm telling you, it's a hundred times faster. So we're this close, this close to getting this mobile app in your hands. And for those of you that asked me if you could be beta testers, for sure, keep sending me your Apple ID emails. My email is um, scott at cited.co. I know we use a few different emails, scott at cited.co. If you want to be a beta tester on the app, we'd love to have you. Okay. I think, uh, I think I've kind of gotten it all out there. All right, today. everybody. Peace.